Today's video, we're going to be measuring the total amps loaded on each panel for our one megawatt transformer there. We're going to be measuring at the gear. Got to make sure that all of our panels are not overloaded. If you think that's interesting, hit like, subscribe with the bell. Don't forget to check out our other social media accounts like Gab, Parlor, Mines, Bitchu, Rumble, YouTube. And if you're looking for someone to manage a ASIC mining farm such as this one, we got 1.75 megawatts here. Go to CryptoLLC.org, send us an email. Or if you're looking for a GPU mining, same thing, go to Crypto LLC. So what we're gonna do today, here's a fluke, this fluke. We're gonna set it to measuring from the flex. We're gonna measure the total amps loaded. It's gonna use a magnetic field. You put these two together right here and you put the copper wire through the loop here. It's gonna measure the magnetic field around it and give us a total amp load. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our gear and we're going to do just that. And I'll show you guys how it works. So I'll open this guy up. All right, so here's our panels here. We got panel one, two, three, four, five, five panels. So what you do is, I'll just put this guy right over here. And let's just grab, uh, you have, oh, before I do that, I'm gonna explain how it works. So you have, it's three phases. So you have one, two, three, so that's A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. So C is blue, B is red, and black is A. So those are the different legs that are going into the 600 amp panel. I said each 600 amp panel. This is 600 amps, 600, 600, 600, and then four, uh, 200 over there. So let's wrap this guy around. So I'm gonna wrap around both of the wires. So that's A. Now, it shows me that there is 576 amps loaded on A. Right, so that's good, that's less than 600. Even if, it's go if it goes up to like 600 and, you know, 10, it's fine. Nothing's gonna happen. Now, let's measure on the same panel Let's measure B. So B's at 564, that's really good. Now, let's measure C. Now you might be wondering, why is it so low? The reason is because as the weather is cooler, the miners run more efficient. And because of that, they do not use all the watts that they were you know, when they were officially manufactured them. So 577 right there. So this is good. Now, in the summertime, they will be, you know, 600 or more on each leg. It'll be 600 or more here, 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 and here. Now, I can show you the rest of them, but they're about the same, 560, 70, 80, around there. Now, another way to do it is, if you can just grab one with the claw here, you can actually just grab onto one of these legs at the bottom of the 200 amps. It's just not a double. I'll just grab onto it. Now, I have to switch it to this one setting right here. So just grab onto it. Actually, it's this one. And you can see 183 amps right there. 183. Now, let's grab number B. 195. See, that guy's loaded up a lot more. Now, let's grab C. 183. So, 183, 183, 195. So, that's how you measure it out. Let me close this down, because it's not raining a little bit. I don't want it to rain on there. So let's just close that down a little bit here. There go. All right, let's go somewhere where it's uh, not raining. All right, so again, to measure with the claw, you set this guy to this setting right here. That's the amp setting. You gotta get the amps for it with the claw. Then to measure with the flex, which is this right here, this is the flex. You set it to the flex setting here at the top. So that way you can grab more than one wire, more than one copper, more than one cord. And you can measure what the load is on that. So those are two settings there. All right, so now let's talk about um, what happens in the summertime. So, like I said, in the summertime, if the temperature goes up a lot, like during the day,
So all the Miners fans, they all boost to 100%. They're all at 100%. Because of that or low, you're already using more watts because they're at 100. Right now, it's uh, 45 degrees outside, so it's pretty cold. Uh, you can see it's raining, it's cold. There is no sun. See, no sun, no nothing, just clouds. So that cools off the container as well because there's no sun hitting the roof or hitting the container or whatever. So that by itself also uh, cools it off. And what happens is in the summertime, it's gonna get hotter. All the fans boot up to 100%. On top of that, all the chips on the board all heat up a little warmer, a little warmer, a little warmer as the temperature increases. And what that does is that as the chip becomes warmer, it uses also a little bit more watts. So you can just imagine there's, you know, let's say there's like 50 chips or 100 chips or 120 chips on the board. Each one of those chips, if it just uses one watt more, just one watt, it's already 120 watts more if it's a 120 watt board, let's say a 100 watt board. It's already like 100, 120 watts more. Then if, it, if it, each chip uses one watt more, much more electricity it will use. So as of right now, we're good. Good, because I already set everything up where it can handle the winter and the summer and all that stuff. But in the summertime, it's gonna be way more complicated. I have to use this tool a lot more often because I have to really make sure that they do not pop, all right? So what's gonna happen is if those panels go over 600, right? So let's say the panel goes to 610, right? That's fine, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna be fine, it can handle it. But if the panel goes to like 630 amps or 640 amps, what will happen is that big, huge switch that you saw inside the gear, that thing will trip. So you can imagine how many miners are on that panel. You know, there's about uh, about 70 miners, I think, is on that panel. So all 70 miners will go offline immediately, right? So they trip the whole entire breaker. So there's five breakers in there, uh, actually six. I think it's six breakers in there, and one little breaker. So if one of them trips, you're already down like 20%. So 20% of your miners are offline now. And if any of the other breakers trip, you'll lose another 20%, another 20%, and so on. So you don't want that to happen. That's why you to make sure that you do not allow that to happen. Um, a couple of other things is, uh, you can see our filtration system. You see how dirty it is, right? We keep it this dirty on purpose because we want to slow down the humidity and slow down the airflow. Now, as the summertime comes, I'm going to replace the filter. And what, that, what, what, what that's going to do is allow more airflow in, which is what I want for the summer. Like right now, it's see how much rain it is. It's 100% humid because it's raining. But in the summertime, it's not going to be like that. And so that means I can allow more air in. What, what, why I'm saying this is, as you allow more air in, that will allow the miners to run smoother. It'll allow, it'll allow the miners to receive more air, which means that the fans don't have to spin as hard because airflow is a lot easier to get access to. The miner itself is just having an easier time of cooling itself off with more airflow. But in the wintertime, you can see that the situation is like this, and we want it like that. You can see on this side, this, this is just a really dirty side because it's facing uh, this area, which is uh, a lot of the dust and garbage flies. But on this side, you can see even down here with the, the snow shield here, you can see it's still kind of dirty, but not as much. So as the summertime comes, uh, by replacing the filters, that'll automatically help all the miners to run smoother and slow themselves down. And that's what we're gonna do. So in around April time, we're gonna switch out the filters, put on new ones, and that should be good enough for the summer and handle that. All right, so now you know how to use this thing. Now you know why it's important, why we use this thing. This helps us to keep the uptime of all the miners to basically 100%, you know, like 99.9%. Uh, they never go offline because we don't allow it to trip. We make sure that nothing trips and that we also we also use this tool to load all of our miners equally across across the A, B, C. So if you put all the miners on A, B, A, B, A, B, and you just skip C, at the very end, you'll have C with, you know, 30 amps or 50 amps less in A or B, which means you're not equally loading it. So that means you have watts left over that you could have loaded. So this tool also helps to equally load all of the wires onto ABC so that at the very end, you're very close. It's like 100, you know, let's say that last one was 195 and then 183. So just one minor less on C or whatever it was that had the 83 on there, 183. And then that's all the 600 amp pans. They're very close. They're 500 and like 70, 560, 580 and stuff like that. So that's good. So as the summertime comes around, they'll all be at, at around 600. So 
That's also very important because you want to equally load it. You don't want to be left uh, in a situation where at the end of loading all your miners onto the panel, the panel has one of the legs not be fully loaded and the other two legs are overloaded. So you don't want that to happen, all right? Well, that's gonna be it for this video. You know what to do, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. Go to CryptoLLC.org if you're looking for someone to manage a GPU or an ASIC mining farm. We have different options. So the first two options is you can invest either 25 or 30K. It's a 25K for GPUs. It's a leasing agreement with us. <coughs> you would lease uh, <coughs> 14, 3080 GPUs for three years at 25K, or you can lease 14, 3080 GPUs at five years for 30K. Right, those are two options. The third option is if you have $500,000 or more, you can invest with us. Um, this will actually be your uh, miners and be your uh, electricity bill and all that will be on you. Um, but the fee that we take for maintenance and setup and everything will be custom depending on the size of the order, the size of the build out, and what you're going to be going with, a GPU or an ASIC. So if you wanted to build 1,000 GPUs or 2,000 or 3,000, or you wanted to build 500 or 1,000 ASICs or whatever it is, uh, the minimum investment is 500K for that one. All right, so those are the three options you have. Send us an email. Go to CryptoLLC.org and get in touch with us. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. Until next time, bye.